My name is Igor Vorobtsov and I am a technical consulting engineer from Intel. Today we are going to have a short introduction to Data Parallel C++. We will address following topics starting with a question what is DPC++, learning a compilation and execution flow of a DPC++ application and getting some directions on how and where to get a compiler. After day one session on SQL language, I expect that all of you have an understanding on what SQL is. It can be summarized as a C++ single source heterogeneous programming for OpenCL in accordance with the current SQL standard, which is managed by the Kronos group. So by standard, SQL is a cross-platform abstraction layer. Data Parallel C++ is a high-level language designed for data parallel programming productivity. It is based on C++ for broad compatibility and uses common familiar C and C++ constructs. The language seeks to deliver performance on par with other compiled languages, such as standard C++ compiled code, and uses C++ class libraries to allow the compiler to interpret the code and run on various supported architectures. DPC++ is based on SQL from Kronos Group to support data parallelism and heterogeneous programming. In addition, Intel works on extensions to SQL with the aim of providing value to customer code and working with a standards organization for adoption. For instance, the DPC++ language includes an implementation of unified shared memory to ease memory usage between the host and accelerators. These features have been driven into a future version of a SQL language. You can take a look for a full list of additional features on Intel GitHub project with a detailed description. Note that all of SQL is included in DPC++. Let's talk about some DPC++ implementation details. As I said, it is a C++ language and it doesn't introduce new keywords, so from the syntax point of view, it is a regular C++. The C++ is extended to DPC++ via the template library. It is a set of header files required for compilation and the runtime. The front end of a DPC++ compiler is based on the C lang, as well as a back end is based on LLVM framework. There is an open source DPC++ compiler initially created by Intel available from a GitHub repository, and you can build the DPC++ compiler using available sources. There is also a commercial version of a DPC++ compiler available in binaries as a part of Intel One API toolkits. All the features of DPC++ and SQL are supported by both the open source and commercial versions of the DPC++ compilers. Goal of DPC++ open source project is to merge the top trunk of LVM and CLA. You can find an Intel graphics compute runtime for One API Level 0 and OpenCL driver following this link. It is also an open source project which provided compute API support for Intel graphics hardware architectures. NEO is the shorthand name for this compute runtime. It currently supports Gen 9 and later graphics devices. Now let's talk about DPC++ compilation and execution flows. Compilation model supports code that executes on both a host and accelerator, or several accelerators. In that case, commands issued by compiler, linker, and other supporting tools are obviously more complicated than usual C++ compilations. However, DPC++ compiler hides this complexity for us by default and just works out of box. Here is a simple example of a one-source file compilation process. You may compile it using a DPC++ compiler driver with a single compiler command. Usually, at least two compilers are involved under the hood. One is a host compiler, and the other one is a device compiler. With default options, the output for device code is an intermediate form. At runtime, the device handler on the system will just in time compile the intermediate form into code to run on the device. Since we have a single source code which combines both the host and device code, it is natural 
to want a single executable file to be the result. The linker merged both binaries generated by host and device compilers to a FAT binary. In our example, the device code in a FAT binary is an intermediate form that defers the final code creation until runtime. To be more specific, it is a SPIRV binary format. There is also an option to do a target specific executable code, and we will cover it in the following slides. Once you have your FAT executable, you want to execute it on some device. A DPC runtime consists of two parts. High-level SQL runtime, which for example should occur on data dependencies by creating a dependency graph and scheduling kernel's execution order, and a lower-level runtime, which should map high-level abstractions to the real hardware commands. DPC++ uses a plugin interface to target different backends. Intel provides an OpenCL plugin that enables DPC++ to run on OpenCL platforms at this moment. However, there is also a level 0 API specification available, which provides direct to metal interfaces to offload accelerator devices. While initially influenced by our low level API such as OpenCL, the level 0 API are designed to evolve independently. There is also a plugin implemented by Codeplay that adds the support for NVIDIA to the DPC compiler, and it is based directly on NVIDIA CUDA rather than OpenCL. It can be selected at runtime by setting the environment variable SQLBE. So DPC++ is not limited to use an OpenCL low-level APIs as a backend. We already talked about one file compilation flow and covered some execution basics. This picture summarizes it and shows a full compilation and execution flow of DPC++ application. The DPC++ compiler generates an intermediate representation that can be just in time compiled to a specific target at runtime. Or it can generate target specific executable code similar to traditional C++ compilers ahead of time compilation. DPC++ supports ahead of time compilation for Intel CPUs. Intel Processor Graphics Gen 9 or above, and Intel FPGAs. To use the AOT feature for targeting a GPU, you must have the OpenCL offline compiler installed. You can find more details following this link. Now, let's talk about where and how to get the DPC compiler. There are several ways how to get it. The easiest one is to use a pre-built compiler shipped with one of the One API toolkits. An alternative is to use a dev cloud with already installed tools on a variety of supported hardwares. There is also an option to build a compiler sources from a GitHub project, but you will anyway want One API toolkit because there is a set of useful tools there. The Intel Dev Cloud is a development sandbox program DPC++ cross architecture application. You can sign up for a full access to the latest Intel CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs with the installed Intel One API toolkits. Intel offers many toolkits, but there is a core set of high performance tools for building data parallel C called Intel One API Base Toolkit. Other add ons toolkits targeting specific developer workloads that build on the core toolkit. For example, in one API HPC toolkit, you may find additional HPC tools like Fortran Compiler. You can download toolkits for free and find more details on each toolkit at software.intel.com slash one API. As a summary note, the DPC++ delivers power and productivity of modern C++ and leverages SQL standard to support parallelism and heterogeneous programming. Thank you for your attention and now we are open for questions.